Well, first of all, you know, uh, thank you for coming, you know, for, for joining this, uh, this webcast <laughs> today. I really appreciate it, man. Um, now, you know, I always enjoy talking to you because you, you're always very positive. You know, you just, you know, you're an inspirational guy. You know, you, you I, I remember doing your, it was like a training podcast with Kai Green and I told you this, you know, when we're doing it live. It's always, uh, you know, you just, you just always seem very resilient and just a, a guy that motivates others, you know what I mean? And um, how did that happen? You know what I mean? How did you actually, you know, commit to that? And were you always like that your whole life? Or is it something like, just kind of like you just decided to, to be that way? No, no, actually, I think, uh, I think the reason that you find me so positive is because uh, I grew up in Maine. Uh, Maine is a place, it's a huge state, but there's only a million people in Maine. And so it's kind of a desolate state. Uh, things are very spread out. There are a lot of trees. There's snow. The mosquitoes are so big, you need a machine gun. Because they'll bite your arm off. But uh, I grew up on a farm in Maine. And from a very young age, I had a happy childhood, but we had to do manual labor. We had to clean out the uh, the sheep's pen and the pig's pen. Uh, it was very cold. There would be some mornings uh, that I would wake up in bed and I could see my breath because it was that cold in the house. Uh, my dad was a doctor and my mom is great. Like my parents were fantastic parents, but you know, living in the element, it was a huge challenge. I was also very active in the Boy Scouts and I'm not really an outdoorsy guy, but I was forced to take a lot of hikes in the woods, build lean twos, go fishing and catch nothing. And so I'll tell you, I worked hard when I was younger in a way that really taught me a work ethic. Then I came, uh, then I went to New York. I became a trainer. I love being a trainer, but every morning I woke up in New York to train people, I realized I didn't have to work on a farm, and that was like a joy. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that I didn't have those, those intense responsibilities, and so it always put me in kind of a good mood. When I lived in New York, people would say to me, man, you're so California. I didn't really know what that meant, but I think it meant happy and well-adjusted. But anyway, I came out to L.A., and uh, I didn't know anybody. I started training actors. I started uh, assembling a team of really elite trainers where we could work together, not where I'm their boss and they're my underlings, but really we're a team. They're wonderful guys from a very diverse background and we have a great time and we try to help people. I was, I was destined to live a service-based life, not a self-serving life, but trying to help others. My favorite seven words are, how can I help you today? That's my my favorite thing. That's my mantra. I also recently got married to my best friend, the woman of my dreams. She's my muse. I mean, you think I'm inspired? It's because of this gorgeous little Asian girl that I sleep next to every night. She is amazing. Thank you, man. I'm so happy. We just got married. We were going to have like a, a fantastic wedding. And then COVID set in. We were like, man, it's going to be it's going to be months or years before we can assemble our families and our friends together to celebrate. So as they say in the movies, we went to Vegas, ow! And we did it in Las Vegas, it was so fun. But, um, but honestly, she inspires and motivates me every day. You know, the, the big difference about being a trainer here in Los Angeles versus being in New York, I was busy in both places, but here in Los Angeles, every day I spend time with artists. I spend time with actors and musicians, celebrity chefs, directors, producers, writers. And when you have that live creative energy around you, it is so inspiring, and it's my job to make them look amazing. It's my job to take someone who's always who's who's already considered to be one of the best in the world, and make them better. So that I like that, man. I like it a lot. So I I'm living my dream, man. I grew up in a place where there was snow. I wake up and I see palm trees. That's cool. That's no, I hear that. I remember the first time we spoke, you mentioned you met you mentioned Jack Lane, right? That was a big inspiration for you. Um, yes, Jack Lane is he's my number one professional influence by far can, can you talk about him like because I, I, I feel like a new generation not really up on him like that you know so i feel like maybe you can just share uh, something about him why, why is he so inspirational to you well you know jack lalane was the very first fitness pioneer he was the first guy on television he had a show for almost 30 years on television where he would work out with housewives and people that were at home and it was a fantastic thing he was all about the science of change exercise diet and sleep. And he believed that if you exercised on a regular basis, if you ate healthy foods in their natural form, he used to say, if man made it, don't eat it. If it tastes, spit it out. And then also he was early on telling people that relaxing and lowering your stress and going to sleep early at night really enhanced your life. He was all about having a positive mood and a positive outlook on life. 
he was the number one fitness inspiration in my professional career. At a time that I had achieved some success in New York and I came out to Los Angeles to make my way in Hollywood, I met him early on and the things that he put into me that he instilled in my heart, I was very impressionable at that time. And he said, you have to be that ambassador that reaches their hand out to the average person and says, come with me on this journey. It's going to be fantastic. I feel like I'm a reflection of the things that he started. He might have left this world, but he's alive and well in my heart. I'm still very close with his family to this day. I mean, he used to do fantastic feats of strength. He would shackle his arms and shackle his feet and pull 25 boats filled with people from Alcatraz into San Francisco. And it was actually, if you want to know the truth, it was under Jack's direction that I did 40,000 push-ups to raise money for charity. 40,000 push-ups? Boom, baby! <laughs> <laughs> what was what was he like in person? I mean, when you had a one-on-one conversations with him, what was he like? He was actually um, he was back actually very enthusiastic in front of a crowd, but privately he was very intense. And I think because I met him in his nineties, I mean, he, it's I met him later later in his life. I think he felt that sense of urgency to instill in me the things that he felt were important. One of the things he said to me one day was, "Eric, you need your own TV show." And I said, uh, I have no ambition to be on television. My goal is to be the greatest trainer of all time. I thought maybe he misunderstood me. And he said, no, you need your own TV show because that's how you're going to get your message out there. And my initial reaction when Jack said that was, oh, great. Oh, this is just wonderful. Now I'm going to have to take hosting lessons. I'm going to have to try to audition to get on a TV show. Well, let me tell you, Jack was right. Nearly six months later, I got a call out of the blue from a place in Chicago where they said, we're launching a fitness TV show with celebrities. We're looking for a host. And I've been hosting that for the past six years. You can watch it. Um, and he was right. Getting the message out there through television really helps. It's like a big megaphone. I love it. It's so fun. What's interesting about uh, Jack from what I read about him is that he lived to be, I think, 96 years old, right? And he yes. continued working out all, all the way until he's passing. All the way through that, you know, it's amazing. Each morning he would spend an hour in the pool swimming, which is great exercise, and then another hour in his weight room. I've been to his home in, in Morro Bay. I've worked out on those exact machines. He has a spectacular gym there. He was a very active guy, and he actually, he walked the walk and talked the talk to the extent where even his own wife, Elaine Lalane, who we call Lala, uh, would say to him, Jack, it's my birthday. I'm going to have a piece of cake. Because he wouldn't let anyone have cake on their birthdays. He was so determined to be that great example. But he was a wonderful inspiration for me. I think about him every day. You know, religious people always say, what would Jesus do? I actually say the same, the same letters, but I say, what would Jack do? And many times when I have opportunities that come my way, I think to myself, what would Jack do in this situation? And it really guides me in many ways professionally. Mm -hmm. And he was a he was a real businessman too, right? He built different different businesses, I'm assuming. I don't know too much about him, but like, what was he doing besides just fitness? Well, you know, back in those days, it was very hard for him to get sponsors for his TV show. So he actually started a mail order business with equipment and supplements. And those dollars supported him having his show. So he was a real innovator at the time. It's really cool. That's 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 very interesting because I know people always uh, say Joe Weider when they think about you know accolades for business in the fitness industry. But I feel like Jack Lane is just you know it's up there. It's just I feel like people need to be reminded about him. You know that's why I'm glad we're talking about him. Oh yeah, Jack Lane to me is the greatest fitness practitioner of all time. And I'll tell you something else. Over the weekend, this past Sunday, I shot a TV show with Lou Ferrigno. And Lou knows of Jack's influence professionally on me. And while we were taking a break from being on camera, he said to me, Eric, Jack was one of my best friends. And he told me the greatest Jack LaLanne stories and what a great influence he was even on Lou Ferrigno. And Lou is, I mean, when those cameras come on, Lou turns on the charm. That guy's a pro. He's been on sets for 40 years. It was so great hearing him talk about Jack and his mm -hmm. great friendship. No, for sure, man. Now, another cool thing you told me, which, which was kind of funny, I remember you told me, you know, I'm always smiling, always happy, but, you know, um, people should not mistake in my niceness for weakness. Uh, you mentioned that. It was very interesting um, because, talk about that, you know what I mean? Because you're always smiling, you're a very happy guy, right? But you are a tough guy. Is that, is that accurate? Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, it takes a lot to get me mad. But when I do, and I don't want to sound like Lou Ferrigno, you don't want to see me mad. Uh, no, no. I what really, happens when you're mad? Well, I, I really, I'm you know, curious. Um, the things that make me mad the most are injustice. 
you know, uh, I'm a guy that works out every day. I'm a guy that's very uh, filled with a physical lifestyle. And so when I walk down the street, I'm not necessarily the guy that people would want to pick fights with just because of my physique. However, I, I feel like if I'm walking around the world and I see something where, where there's injustice happening, I'll give you an example. Um, I, I have three black belts in martial arts. I started martial arts when I was 10 years old because I was a very short kid. And I think my dad was smart. He knew that I was going to be short for a long time. So he thought it might be good for me to learn some martial arts. I've been doing martial arts now for 41 years. That's a long time. Um, and I've evolved from different types of martial arts. But I can tell you this, my son, I have a son, a 22-year-old son who I love to hang out, out with and we play music together and we work out. He and I went on a trip to Las Vegas and we came back through the Burbank airport and he and I were talking at baggage claim. And he said, dad, that was such a great weekend. I had such a great time. Do something. And I was like, do something. And I turned around and there was a fight at baggage claim at the Burbank airport. Two guys going at it. And I said to him, stay here. And I walked right up like Paul Bunyan. And I grabbed the two guys and I spread them apart. They both looked at me like shocked because I was much physically larger than both of them waiting for me to say something. You know, you never know what you're going to say in those emergencies. Guess what they said completely by mistake. Can't we all be friends? I know. So corny. But I just want you to know. Yeah, man. Um, I, uh, I, I, I have a thriving business here in Los Angeles. We do consulting. We do endorsements. We do group training. We do all kinds of great stuff. And, uh, and just because I'm nice, uh, just remember that uh, I'm sharp and I'm ready to rock and roll. So we, we, we do spot charlatans occasionally in the industry. I mean, we're in Hollywood, so there's all kinds of guys that are around like this that actually live in a trailer park. And, uh, and so when we spot them, it's not that we beat them up. We just sort of banish them from our world. We've got a very beautiful and cool world with all kinds of great personalities. I mean, in our gym at any one time, there's the, the U.S. heavyweight sumo champion. There's the White House chef. We have all kinds of great personalities. And we, we actually we, we don't allow people from the outside who are charlatans to come in. No, for sure. I, mean, I feel like it's cool that you're always smiling. You're a positive guy because I feel like um, the industry is so macho driven. You see a lot right. of guys, they're always looking mean, you know what I'm saying? It's almost like they, you know, they, it's almost they put up a front so nobody tries them, you know what I mean? You, you're the totally opposite of that, you know what I mean? So I always find it very different about you, which is cool. Well, I'll tell you, one of the reasons I smile all the time is because I honestly love people. I love dealing with the public. One of my goals is to be like Jack LaLanne and follow in his footsteps and to go to places like Des Moines and Kansas City and, uh, and rural Illinois and say to the average person going through their lives, hey, we can actually make this equation much, much better. Let's eat healthier food. Let's work out together. Let's get some better sleep. Let's spend less time on our phones and more time conversing with each other. I'm on a mission to change the world, and I don't think it's going to be stopped by anybody. Boom!